Hello and welcome to this overview of DeliveryX's recent look at the top 1,000 retailers in Europe with a real focus on what they do regarding their operations, logistics and the last mile. I'm Katie Searles, editor of DeliveryX and one of the authors of this report. This webinar is part of our wider e-commerce world review and it looks to provide some of the key findings but also takes a deeper look at the importance of that delivery experience to the consumer and how that shapes e-commerce operations from the supply chain right through to the developing use of technology. For the past eight years, RetailX has ranked the top 1,000 retailers across Europe and this new report really focuses in on that supply chain, logistics oper operations, partnerships and even the move towards a more sustainable future. To bring it to life though, I'm delighted Delighted to be joined by Kane Edwards, Business Development Manager for Locus Robotics. And before we really delve into the world of e-commerce operations, Kane, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and also about Locus? Absolutely. Thanks, Katie, and thanks for inviting us. Um, yeah, really, really good to be able to, to, to talk through this report with you. Um, I am Business Development Manager for Locus, uh, based in the UK, but, but covering um, sort of European and international expansion for the company. Um, and for those that don't know, Locus Robotics uh, design and build autonomous mobile robots, uh, AMRs, um, that, that operate within logistics and fulfillment industries, um, working alongside uh, traditional warehouse workers um, to support retailers with sort of e-com and, and store replenishment activities. Um, really looking to sort of cut some of those non-value added times out um, and <clears throat> move into kind of a new world of, of innovation, um, which sustainability is a great point you mentioned. Um, but, but also sort of implementing um, shorter cycle times um, and making warehouses a much nicer place to work, hopefully, uh, with this innovation. Excellent. Thank you. We will come on to AMRs later, but with all of our reports, we start with what drives retailers, and that is their customers. The report looks at the importance of delivery to to consumers across Europe and unsurprisingly as e-commerce grows that importance of delivery has also grown. Nearly 40% of European consumers now shop online once a month and that means delivery and direct delivery to your home has become a driving factor. On average 42% of e-commerce shoppers in Europe are doing so because they can get items straight to their door. For UK shoppers, that number is even higher at nearly 47%. In France, it's sitting around 40%, and in Germany, 43%. Kane, for retailers, have they had to turn to technology such as AMRs to deal with this increased demand and expectation? Yeah, look, I think, um, Katie, it's, it's been well documented. Um, you know, what we've had over the past few years in terms of with sort of the pandemic and lockdowns um, and, and shopping behaviors and habits changed in terms of people kind of going to the high street realizing that yeah you can order um anything you want essentially and pretty much have it arrive uh, at your doorstep next day um and, and people have got very uh, very used to that ability and, and retailers of course have had to keep up with that um that increased demand people expect it now it's not a nice to have uh, which it was not so long ago it's now an expectation um so yeah within that that sort of first um element of uh of a, a life cycle in terms of picking the product as soon as that order comes in. Um, yeah, technologies had to be um, implemented quite quickly to be able to keep up with that and get products out the door a lot quicker than what was probably possible um, only three, four, five years ago. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and you, you see the examples here in terms of, <clears throat> yeah, the reasons why um, shoppers are moving to online and cheaper prices, but direct to my door is a huge driver, a huge driver, sorry for that. And uh, technologies crucial in enabling that for, for retailers. And sticking with that, getting things to their door even quicker, there is this sort of idea now that we want things super fast. Uber recently commented in a conference that same day is now next day. Um, but our report and consumer survey found that speedy delivery actually still sits below a lot of other key factors. Um, whilst nearly 42% of EU consumers see speedy delivery as an important factor, that sits behind product availability, 
price, the ease of returns. So despite Uber's comments, it seems that actually next day is still very much the favoured opinion for shoppers across Europe. Kane, with the use of, say, AMRs and warehouse technology, does that help to keep that next day promise and even in the future make it super fast? Yeah, absolutely. Look, you know, the, the, the delivery in terms of AMRs and, and robotics within warehousing environments has enabled that ability to almost as soon as you've got an item in your basket, if you're shopping online, it, it is ready to be picked um, and, and robots can enable that um, increase productivity to pick it and get out of the door a lot faster. Um, I think it's a really interesting point that there's always a trade-off. So, you know, in chasing speed, you then potentially lose that, uh, that accuracy um, and also um, potentially damage items in terms of trying to do things a little bit too quickly to, to hit that same day metric. And in terms of how often you really need something same day, it's, it's, it's probably people realize that, you know, you can probably wait until next day. So um, I think that's where we'll probably sit as a sweet spot. You know, same day people can go to stores still most of the time. Um, and actually, that's the point whereby you can still get that speed in terms of next day delivery, but still then have a high level of accuracy um, so that the right item is, is turning up at the door. Um, and that's where technology is quite comfortable um, in being able to deliver that now. Excellent. As with all of our reports, we like to showcase sort of our examples with what retailers are actually doing. This Delivery X Top 1000 report starts with a feature looking at the supply chain, the logistics, how they're cleaning up the delivery experience, and then uses a number of company profiles, such as this M&S one, to showcase what the retailers are actually doing. M&S acquired just its contact, contract logistic provider last year as part of a plan to modernise its whole supply chain. Kane, with the retailers you work with, is there any that really stand out that have gone above and beyond to modernise their operations? Yeah, I, I mean, there's there's numerous examples where, you know, um, our, our retailer clients have, have implemented um, obviously our systems, but end-to-end but -end, um, <clears throat> levels of technology to, to, to deliver something new. And, and I think something that's um, being seen more and more is that value-added service. So it's not just, you know, ordering an item it's then how can you have you know uh gift boxes and packaging or personalization and, and all that sort of stuff now is that next step and, and the technology available to do that and, and still be able to hit those those slas you know it used to be that if you wanted something to be personalized you'd then be looking at that maybe three to five business days or even maybe longer you know expected in a two-week cycle um, whereas now um, you know you see it with uh, sort of birthday, holiday gifts, whatever it might be, that, that you can still go on and get something very personalized with, with that um, sort of value added service on it um, with the same speed that you would expect from uh, from an all product. So it's really about thinking um, to the retailers, especially within a logistics and fulfillment setting, um, is, is not just being able to you know automate or, or advance a certain process. It's how can you look at the whole end to end metric? Um, so from the moment the product comes in to the moment it leaves the door, um, how can you modernize? And, and you'll see it again in terms of being able to track that as well. You know, it used to be that you could only really start tracking something from when the final courier had it. So probably same day and maybe you'll say, all right, we can expect to see it within a certain time slot. Um, whereas actually now, you know, you can start to see that tracking from the moment it leaves the door. Um, and that's all because of the technology that's available in terms of seeing in a product's journey from, from warehouse to, to consumer's front door um, or, or to, the, to the store, obviously. Um, the technology there and the visibility um, is, is really impressive. So, yeah, a lot of different examples that we could show. Um, and each retailer, I think, is thinking about the customer first in terms of how can they enhance that, that journey. That customer visibility is increasingly important, but we're also seeing consumers want things to be done increasingly green and be more sustainable. Um, one example in this report is the Dutch supermarket Albert Heijn, which I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but they are looking to switch up their entire urban fleet to electric vehicles by the end of this year. So deliveries in Amsterdam, The Hague, Central Rotterdam and Utrecht will all be made using electric powered vehicles. They estimate that an electric truck will save 75,000 kilograms of C2 compared to a decent alternative for an electric van, it's 13,000 kgs of CO2. Ken, am I right in thinking that your systems, Locus Robotics, they're 
the AMRs are all electric. So even in the warehouse, we're seeing that transition to a more sustainable solution. Yeah, you're completely right, Katie. Um, again, you know, I think that um, warehousing and, and logistics centers have uh, a bit of a, a dirty image of, of being, um, you know, uh, carbon heavy in terms of, you know, big uh, diesel forklifts uh, and needing a lot of um, power to heat and light um, and keep a warehouse um, operational. And, you know, we're seeing it. Um, most of our most of our, our clients that we talk to um, now are looking at how they can implement maybe solar panels to provide cleaner energy. Um, can they have LED lighting, which can be, you know, censored so it's not on all the time and, and elements like that. Um, and you're right, yeah, you know, with 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 RMRs, if they can be powered by by greener energy, um, we've got lithium ion battery, <coughs> batteries in the, in the robots, which obviously deliver a, a, a much sort of smoother and more efficient um, power outlet. Um, and with opportunity charging, and, and there's a lot of technology that goes into um, sort of maximizing that efficiency in terms of keeping the robots running and not having them charging all night and, and wasting power. Um, and the way that you can utilize the robots um, so that, yeah, they're not they're not traveling more than they need to um, and, and expending more more energy. And it's really interesting. You know, we're seeing net zero and, and a lot of initiatives. But actually, you know, again, the technology is there. It's capable um, and and it's being implemented. And, and yeah, you know, our robots are, are a part of that. Um, but but warehouses, everything under the roof now is is trying to be, uh, I think, a lot of trying to trying to, uh, yeah, make that a little bit greener, um, hitting that sort of corporate social responsibility. It's, uh, yeah, it's a big topic at the moment. It is a big topic at the moment, but it's also those little wins of changing to LED lighting to make things powered by electricity. It also, as you said, brings efficiency goals and makes things more streamlined. One interesting stat to, from this report is just how efficient delivery actually is. We found that in Switzerland, the success rate of a first delivery attempt is 99.7%. This is even more impressive when you think that just Swissport alone, so the national delivery service, are handling 194 million parcels across all regions last year. In the UK, it's a healthy 94%, but these figures could could be made even better by increasing use of a safe space or maybe a PUDU network. Ken, do these figures surprise you or do you think because we have increasingly smart operations that we're always going to get to such high levels of first time delivery? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly really interesting seeing that in, in this report, Katie, but um, I, I think you're right. I think it can be expected that you would see this and, and it goes back to some of that visibility that we mentioned earlier in terms of, you know, people can see, OK, I know that my my item is going to be arriving, you know, from the point that you order it, you can set your delivery day, you know, whereas before maybe it used to be, OK, within within a, a, a certain three to five working day window, which is much harder to then, you know, track, whereas if you know I'm going to be on, on a certain day, um, then you can stick to that. And, and you're right, you know, working habits, people are freer to work from home certain times. And, and, and naturally, that, that's going to uh, that's going to enable a, a better success rate in terms of those delivery rates. Um, but, you know, some of those are very high. That still surprises me because, uh, you know, I think that there's a load of factors that, that could mean that that, that wouldn't be successful, um, which is out of anyone's hands, you know. So to be hitting 99%, that, that's, that's a crazy number. Um, and, and it's great, you know, it goes back to that whole point in terms of sustainability, in terms of environmental, you know, you don't want to be doing double deliveries because it is, it's, it's more carbon, it's more fuel, uh, it's more time. Um, so actually, yeah, the higher you get that number, the more sustainable the whole um, logistics cycle is um, for, for couriers, for retailers, and, and obviously consumers can then feel a little bit better about, yeah, getting it when they want it and uh, not having to waste time waiting around for items. So certainly inevitable, but, but great to see. It is great to see and it, it is brilliant to sort of share these success stories. There is a, a few areas where we do need to work on and one of them that has been discussed a lot recently is around returns and trying to minimise them. Um, returns are a massive part of retail, whether it's an unwanted product, it's ill-fitting. Even when we were dealing with uh, bricks and mortar stores, you still saw returns. E-commerce seems to have created a bit of a monster. 
Some retailers are looking to charge for returns now. There's no such thing as a free return. Others are turning to technology to try and get the fit right in the first place to limit those returns. Zalando being one of them that was showcased in this report. They are turning to sort of VR technology and virtual fitting rooms. Products are going to have to come back into a retailer's warehouse though even if we do get this all right there things are going to have to be sent back do warehouse robotics do does technology and smarter technology have a part to play in streamlining this process so retailers can get it maybe back on sale or or out the door quicker again kane yeah again it's 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 a really interesting point katie it's a really um highly um focused topic for retailers at the moment because you're right it, it's a very costly process um to be able to re return goods um because you know anything that comes in needs to be quality checked again even if you know packaging is intact it still needs to be potentially retagged repackaged um and, and then restored and then available again um and, and the key part on that is obviously um, optimizing those processes as much as possible making it as cost effective as possible but also in you know the world especially thinking about fashion where you've got Zalando there is the world of fast fashion if something's been ordered and and then coming you know if it was on sale maybe or comes back in um products are only available for a, a much smaller window now you know new lines come in and suddenly if it takes weeks to get it available again that that's no longer desirable you know that's not being pushed anymore so it's really important for retailers to be able to get those products back available and ready to be picked um and you're right you know <clears throat> technology can help with that you know we, we from an amr point of view focus very heavily on being able to combine those processes so you know the same people that can pick an order can also help with replenishment and, and returns put away um and, and that visibility once again keep saying it you know technology visibility with scans and and, and real-time data um, instead of waiting for someone to, to kind of um, manually input something you can scan and say look we know this is in the building again now and now it's available straight away on the website for someone to order as soon as it's available it's ready to be picked and actually sometimes it's quite a lot that even we don't need to even worry about putting it away because it's ready to be picked straight away because you know that demand is there um, so it, it's it's I think we're seeing movements towards a more um, cost-efficient and sustainable model for returns. Um, we've seen retailers that say they will um, not charge you for returns to, to the store um, because that, that's obviously much easier to keep keep that for sale on a hanger versus having to process it. But inevitably, like you say, it's going to happen um, where people get the wrong size or whatever it is. You know, this technology, I haven't tried it myself. I might look at it and see how accurate it is. But um, it's 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 because. You, you can go and try something on at a shop, right? But you, you, you can't guarantee what, you, what you're going to get when you're shopping online. So people would historically order in three sizes and send two back. Um, maybe that behavior will change slightly, but, but it's always going to have to be handled. And, and yeah, technology can certainly support that. Another example in this report is New Look now have drop-off kiosks that people can return their online orders to store for free. It's, it is definitely worth checking out. Today's webinar has just meant to highlight some of the key findings of the report. There is lots more in there. We look at the growth of re-commerce, we look at the growth of repair and resale. There's also a brilliant case study on Asda trialling autonomous vehicles for delivery in London. But for today, a massive thank you to Kane. Kane, if people want to find out a little bit more about Locus Robotics, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, thanks for having uh, me and, and having us, Katie. Um, yeah, anyone that's interested in learning more uh, about Locus, you can go to our website, locusrobotics.com, uh, or on all the usual social media, uh, LinkedIn. We've got some great case studies, uh, some great blogs, and, and sort of ways to uh, look to optimize some of these processes. So, uh, yeah, certainly recommend that as a first port call. Thank you very much. You can download this report in full using that link or find it on internetretailing.net research hub. But for now, though, a massive thank you again to Kane and to our viewers for tuning in. Thank you.